الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters my dear children السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to welcome all of you to the Hokey Hall, where hopefully, inshallah, we'll be praying all the coming Fridays and eight prayers here until our mosque will be ready, inshallah, in a few months' time, inshallah, inshallah. Last week, I was talking about the roots of evil, which feed the tree of evil, Shajarat al zaqqum the tree of evil, it grows in the bottom of the hellfire, and the fruits are like the heads of the devils. The sinners will eat from it, they will fill their tummies with it, and then they will drink shawban min hameem, boiling, boiling water which will completely melt their intestines, and they will drink like the thirsty camels. They will drink and drink and drink. And then this punishment is going to be repeated again and again. One of the roots of evil I spoke about last week was greed, al-tama, al-jasha. And I give few examples from the Quran and I will continue today with the rest of the verses. The first form of greed was piling of wealth. People who hoard wealth simply because they feel that it's a source of power or it might be going to make them live forever, last forever. Thank you. Just to remind you some of the verses I mentioned last week. The first one was in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 14 to 15. Billahi the love of desires of women and sons and all the treasures of gold and silver and well-bred horses and cattle and tilth is made to seem fair to people. Such are the positions of the life of this world, but with Allah is the best of the goals to return to. The most excellent abode is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the second verse was in, in, in chapter 9 at Tawbah, verses 34 and 35, and this was referring to the Christians and the Jews who pile gold and silver and they devour it from the people and they don't spend it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fi sabirillah and on the day of judgment it's going to be heated up and their foreheads, their flanks and their backs will be burned with the silver and the gold they used to hold in this life. So again we are talking about greed which leads people to accumulate wealth and not to use it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to use it to feed the poor and the needy or to look after the orphans or to uh, dig a, a well uh, uh, of uh, water to, to, to give fresh water to someone who can't have sources of water. Many of us, including myself, would rejoice when we receive a check in the post. Allah says that. We love and we adore money. All of us. 
if you receive a parking ticket in the post, you will actually cry maybe or you will have a heart attack or whatever. But we always rejoice when we have money coming to us. The money which has been given to us is on trust. Give them from the money of Allah. The money belongs to Allah, which Allah gave you. والذين في أموالهم حق معلوم للسائل والمحروم and those who have in their wealth a very well defined portion which belongs to those who been deprived and those who ask for it the money is not ours the money belongs to Allah some people will be tested by giving them more wealth some people will be tested by restricting their means فأما الإنسان إذا ما بتلاه ربه when man is being honored by Allah and he will have luxury in life, he will say in boast, Rabbi Akram, oh, look, my Lord has honored me. But when Allah tests him and he restricts his means, well, Rabbi Ahad, my Lord has forgot about, has forgotten about my, my Lord, humiliated me. Kalla. No. You do not honor the orphans. And you don't encourage each other to feed the poor and the needy. And you devour inheritance with all greed. And you love wealth so much. So let us try to get rid of some of the negative attributes. Piling up wealth. A very, uh, I would say, encouraging example to, 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 to uh, forget about this, this habit or this I would call it illness, actually. This, the love we have to accumulate wealth and hoard it and not to spend it in any way to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah At-Takathur, chapter 102. Al-Hakum At-Takathur. We are so busy piling up money. We are so busy trying to earn as much money as we can. Until you have died. So this is something which will continue all the time in our lives. Busy trying to make money. It doesn't, and most unfortunately, unfortunately to say that, the majority of the people, they don't care whether the source is lawful or unlawful. Whether you get the money from lawful sources which would please Allah or from unlawful source, it doesn't matter. Just give me money, give me money. Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مَنْ خَلَاقِ There are people who say to Allah, just give me, give me, give me money in this life. And he has no share, he has no portion in the hereafter. And there are people who say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Please Allah, give me goodness in this life and goodness in the hereafter. And protect us from the hellfire. So those who are trying just to accumulate wealth without even thinking of the source, whether it is lawful or unlawful, they don't think of their position or their life in the hereafter. Alhaqum al-takathur hatta zurtum al You being so engaged, so busy, Accumulating wealth until you die. Zurtum al maqabir Until you visited the grave. Until you ended in the grave. The life was used to accumulate and hold. In Surah Al Humazah, verse uh, chapter 104. Waynun kulli humazatin lumazah. الذي جمع ماله وعدده يحسب أن ماله أخلده. Let me read. Let me read the footnote actually regarding this verse 104. This chapter, I mean.
in Arabic, the word wail. When, when you have a verse starting with wail, wail lil mutaffifin, wail lil kulli humaz, wail means what a great punishment is waiting for those who do this, this, that. Wail lil kulli humazatil lumaza. What a great punishment is waiting for those who spread a scandal among the people and back by it. The one who piles up wealth and keeps counting it. You know, it becomes like an enjoyment to look how much money you have in this account, how many shares have you got, how many eyes have you got, how many bonds have you got, how many cash you got. It becomes like part of your daily routine of piling up money and counting it. الذي جمع مالا وعدده he accumulates and piles up wealth and he keeps counting it because the more he achieves the more happy he feels يحسب أن ما له أخلده he thinks that his wealth is going to make him live forever as if the money will prolong his life there will be no suffering he is fully protected from any evil around him because he has enough wealth to do this to him. And Allah says, Kalla, no. One of the names of Jahannam. Jahannam has, as we know, it is Darakat. Darakat means like an underground car park which has levels going down. Al Jannah Darajat. Al Jannah Darajat means levels of goodness going up like that. The worst part of Jahannam is the lowest part of it, and it has names. There is As-Sa'iyah, there is Jahannam, there is Al-Hutama. This type of people will be burned in the section designated as Al-Hutama, which will break his bones, will break him down into pieces. You thought your wealth is going to protect you? You kept counting it on daily basis? Now see what is happening to you. He will be thrown into that which breaks to pieces. What can tell you about al khutma? What can explain to you what is al khutma? Narullah al muqada, the blazing hell of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, التي تطلع على الأفئدة, which knows very well what is in your hearts. It shall be made into a vault over them, completely covering them. And where is the wealth? Gone. You die and you leave it behind. For whom? For those who will inherit it. You didn't enjoy it while you were in this life and you didn't invest it for your future life and you left it behind. So what's the point? And you may recall in Surat Ali Imran verse 180 Don't let those who think that by accumulating wealth and being so stingy and miser to spend it in the sake of Allah is good for you. No, it is not good for you. It is so bad for you because on the day of judgment it will be like a collar around your neck which will strangle you you hugged your wealth in this life, it will hug you in the hellfire. Big difference. We, we as human beings, we love money, we love wealth. Yes, we do. But don't hug it too close to your heart. Don't be so tight and miser and stingy. Don't hold your hand very close to your neck. 
as Allah says, spend in the cause of Allah. Support your family. Help the needy and the poor. Contribute to good causes. And don't think that you will lose any of your money because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is going to give you more and more. But you have to have this sort of faith and conviction. The more you spend in the, in the cause of Allah to please Allah, the more you spend to please Allah, the more He will give you. The more protection you will get. Prophet Sallallahu said, protect your children with charity. Protect your wealth with charity. Protect your health with charity. Cure your patients with charity. You won't give if you give. And we are giving from something we love so much. We love it and we give it. So piling up wealth is one form of greed. Tama in Arabic, jasha. Another example is bribes. In verse 188, chapter 2. Something the Muslim world is very famous for. Very famous. You can't do anything without having to pay. And you pay sometimes to take something which is not yours and you know, very, you know very well it is not yours. But you don't mind. You have the contacts, you have the power, you have the authority and you are going to bribe the judges to give you something which is not yours. And Allah subhanahu wa listen to what Allah says about this. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتُدْلُوا بِهَا إِلَى الْحُكَّامِ لِتَأْكُلُوا فَرِيقًا مِنْ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ بِالْإِثْمِ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Do not eat up your property among yourselves for vanities, nor use it as bait for the judges with intent that you may eat up wrongfully and knowingly a little of other people's property. The majority of the Muslim countries, all the Muslim countries, you can do that. You can do that. Very easy. You bribe a judge, you know very well that this plot of land is not yours. You know it. But you would like to have it. And the judge is there. You pay the judge, the judge will rule that it is yours, you can have it. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you take one span, and, and and you know it is not yours you will be in the hellfire can you imagine just one span which is not yours this life is temporary this life is not going to last every one of us is getting younger you are approaching your end it is what is left, not what has gone. Try to invest whatever time you have now before your flight call from the departure lounge, which we don't know when. Don't waste your life, whatever is left. If you have taken something which is not yours and you know it very well, give it back. Now, before you have to pay it, on the day of judgment. Imagine an eternal life in hell. Last week, it was so hot and humid. Majority of us couldn't even sleep at night. We were all complaining about the heat. Wait for the heat of Jahannam. And you will see the difference. Ordinary, honest people are content if they refrain from robbery, theft, or imprisonment. Two more subtle forms of the greed are mentioned here. In this verse, 188, chapter 2. One is where 
one uses one's own property for corrupting others, judges, or those in authority, so as to obtain some material gain, even under the cover and protection of the law. The words translated other people's property may also mean public property. A still more subtle form is where we use our own property or property under our own control among yourselves in the text for vain or frivolous uses. Under the Islamic standard, this is also greed. Property carries with it its own responsibilities. Another form of, 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 of being so greedy as well is cheating when you buy and you sell something. Surat al mutaffifin chapter 83. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the chapter by saying, Wailun lil mutaffifin. Again, the same word, wail. Wail means, as I mentioned earlier, what a great punishment is waiting for those who do what? Al mutaffifin. What is mutaffif in Arabic? When I sell something to you, I give you less. And when I buy something from you, I want to have more. And the amount which I cheat you with is known in Arabic as tafif. Tafif means something very, very small, something negligible, something you will not even notice it. <coughs> still, still uh, seven minutes, brother Kaiser. Sorry? Sunnah as well. Your Arabic and ah, okay. So 1.30 the prayer starts. We have to leave the hall immediately okay. after that. Okay, no problem. No problem. للمطففين الذين إذا اتالوا على الناس يستوفون Those when they buy from people they ensure they had a full weight and full measure. And when they sell, وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَلُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ And when they sell, they give them less. One kilogram has 1,000 grams. Yes? And if you give one gram less, can I notice it? Would anyone notice that the, the meat you bought the, or, or, or the, 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 uh, the package you had which indicates 1,000 grams, it has 999. Has any one of us ever checked this? Or the bottle of water you have, which is one liter, 1,000 milliliters. Yes, 1,000 cc, 1,000 cc. Has anyone ever checked it? There are people who specialize in cheating people using a tafif. They steal from you something very, very small. You do not notice it. But because they sell millions of it, they make an enormous wealth. And Allah in chapter 83 is warning them. وَيْلُ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا اتَّالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَلُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ And then Allah says, أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُثُونَ لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ Don't they think or consider that they are all going to come back to a great day when all the people will stand before the Lord of the worlds. I'm going to stop here. Brother Kaiser, any announcement, please? Yeah, yeah. You have exactly one and a half seconds. Yeah. <laughs> By the time you come here, you already used two seconds. I think it's strong enough. It's okay. Islam alaikum wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our new Juma prayer hall. The masjid work has started, alhamdulillah. If you passed there, you would have seen boarding around it. Inshallah, next week there will be a uh, demolition work starting. The protocol for coming here is exactly the same 
as you came to the old masjid, make sure you bring your prayer mats, make sure you bring your uh, bag for the boots, for your shoes, and a mask. So you will be sanitized, you will have to register, and then inshallah, you will leave from the door on the left hand side. We don't want to break the mic. That's all. Let me speak louder. Okay. Uh, if you are coming next week, inshallah, I hope, you will find out that the protocol will be exactly the same, inshallah. We're still going to have two prayers, first and second, until we find out that the numbers are not enough, then we will reconsider. But at the moment, we are going to have two prayers. Uh, we uh, please help generously in the collection box. We need regular payments into the account for the construction work. So if you haven't made a standing order, make a standing order, a monthly, a weekly payment, whatever you can. And inshallah, Allah will reward you abundantly for that. Also, try and get the friends and family involved in the rebuilding of the mosque. It's a Sadaqai Jariya. You can contribute on behalf of those who have deceased, passed away, and it will benefit them as well. Uh, the car park facility that we have is 40 cars are free. There's 10 for volunteers and the trustees, and 30 for the first come, first serve basis. On the car park, when you come in, you turn left, the car park, 30 spaces are free. After that, whoever comes late has to go into pay and display car park. So please make sure that if you are early, you come and make utilization of the car park facility available. And later on, you can go on the other side. Um, can you mention all the ladies? They are welcome. Yeah, um, we did send a message out, 600 messages out to various people. We informed them of this facility and we also notified that from this week, sisters will be welcome to the prayer. This hall on the left side of me is a ladies with its own entrance and exit. So if sisters want to come in, please let them know that we are welcoming sisters back again into the fort now that we've got a bigger place. With regards to our daily prayers, we are still waiting. Uh, inshallah, we'll give you some news when we have it. And in the meantime, Thank you for your help and thank you for cooperating with our staff and volunteers. Jazakumullah khair. Shukran, my dear brother. I would like to say thank you to all the trustees and the volunteers and everyone who spent so much time trying to get this hall available and make it ready for our use. Alhamdulillah, there are so many people are working in the background. You don't know how much time they spend in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take a picture of us, uh, Brother Salim. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, make sure I'm smiling, okay? <laughs> Do that. that. Oh, no.